So we're talking Christianity, we're talking Jesus, and we're like, this guy doesn't look like me, doesn't sound like me. Can African people really connect with him? This is part four of the conversation. If you've not caught the rest, please make sure you do. Always on conversations on church and culture. I, I asked you a question at the end mm. of, of part three of this conversation. Mm. And that question was, is Christianity a hand-me-down from Europe? Yeah. Mm. You know, in Christianity there is declining in Europe and the West. And here it's growing, you know, faster than ever before. Mm -hmm. Have they tried it, seen this thing is useless, doesn't work, and they have tossed it out? And they're like, you Africans, mm. you guys now try it out. Is it mm. a hand-me-down? No. Uh, I think, I think every, every people decides uh, what what they want to do with Jesus, mm. <laughs> and and they, they they make their um, they, they make their decision um, over time and over history. So so before I come to North America, let me talk about uh, let, let me talk about a, a couple of places. Let me talk about Ethiopia. Okay. Um, Ethiopia have had it since you know the first centuries up to now. The, their decision has been that they are going to remain in Christ. Mm. Um, Egypt uh, is, is a bit more of a challenging situation because uh, the Coptic church became, you know, uh, thrived and, and survived even up to today, even through, through persecution today from, from Islam, uh, and, and they made their choice. And uh, North America is I'm saying the north, the global north, because it's, you know, there's you. Uh, some some parts of Europe, for example, France mm. um, was uh, was either the first or the most second most secular nation um, about 20, 25 years ago. Now um, France is actually the most Muslim yeah. <laughs> um, mm. of of of, of, of that, that, part of that part of the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but then to go back and say, um, I think they have they made their decision or they they are making their decisions as. Uh, you know, as time goes by, mm. only time will tell mm. uh, whether they're going to, you know, stay on or not. Mm. Uh, but as to whether it's a hand-me-down, no, I don't think so. Mm. Uh, because, you know, um, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ has the redemptive power. Mm. And, and it's not a, a, a redemptive power that, and that forces itself on people. Um, it is, it is a, you know, redemption that people receive mm. and, and that they, they use for themselves and, mm. and, and they apply it uh, for themselves. Uh, some parts of, of North America, yeah, are, are releasing, you know, leaving the, 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 the faith. Mm. Uh, not all of them. Yeah. Um, there was a time we used to think it's everywhere, but it's actually not everywhere. Mm. And uh, the events of, you know, January 2021 show, show you know, if you look carefully at, at those, you find that, you know, there are places where, you know, Christianity is very strongly entrenched and sometimes entrenched even in the political, you know, framework of, of thinking. Uh, but no, it's not a hand me down. Um, but I actually think that Christianity is really um, yeah, offers hope uh, mm -hmm. for for society. And one of the things that we found, you know, throughout history, is that in the places where people have embraced uh, Christian faith, things things have happened fundamentally in their in the structure of their society that has helped them to thrive. Uh, some places will forget that uh, at their own cost. Mm. And and uh, um, and what we've seen, for example, Europe. Mm. Uh, Europe, you know, rising its, its, into its height. Once it organized itself in the 800s um, and, you know, um, they, 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 they build their learning, they mm. build their universities, mm. they enter into the Enlightenment. Mm. Uh, and, and the Enlightenment mm. is happening in universities that are Christian. In fact, uh, in the 1300s and 1400s, all universities were institutions for theological learning. And so, it, you know, they oh, open wow. the free thinking okay. and yes, so on, yes, you know, yes. all of that. That's the, a result of the enlightenment. Yeah, yeah. And as a result of that, there's enlightenment. And then there's, you know, there's the uh, reformation. There's uh, the industrialization mm. happens, urbanization. And the, the start of the modern age, mm. you know, happens. And Christianity has actually contributed into that. You know, Christianity has shaped the Western mind mm. uh, for, for that to happen. And as that happens, some parts of, of Europe, you know, slowly by slowly, especially in the last 100 to 150 years, mm. have begun to shift away from that. It remains to be seen what's going to happen. Mm. But I think those same things that God has done in those places, um, in terms of organizing people's thought, organizing how people organize themselves, yeah, yeah. you know, creating structures in society, uh, and so on, and, be, and strengthening the institutions of marriage, the institutions of, of, of government, and so mm. on. Those, those are things that uh, that Christ can redeem in Africa today mm. and and that can then offer hope for us mm. in the future. I like that. Mm. I like that. Let me ask you, you've said something interesting. You've said about Christianity shaping the Western 
mm. Western thinking yeah, Western and Western mind. Yeah. mind. Mm. I want to switch lanes, but kind of stick 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 on that you know yeah. um, uh, you know way of saying it. Yeah. Um, when we talk about uh, African, the early African Christians, did they in any way shape mm -hmm. the way of thinking of the West? Mm -hmm. Or more importantly, did they shape early theology? Yeah. Are, are Christians, and we talk about this hand me down thing, we always think, you know, everything was handed down to us. Yeah. The Trinity was brought to Africans. Yeah. The Christmas was brought to Africans. Yeah. Were Africans part of that narrative at any point? Did they shape the narrative at yeah. any point? Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, you know, moving way, 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 way back, I was going to say, do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, look at the past. Pretty old to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're looking at, at, at uh, you know, first hundred, first two hundred years. Yeah. A lot of persecution is going on. The Christian faith at that time is not institutionalized. It's, mm. not, it's not the thing that we know today. The, yeah, yeah. There, there are no churches. Mm. In fact, you can't have churches. Mm. Because if you have churches, you're all going to be killed. You can't mm. even raise money, mm. you know, for that sort of thing. The church is under persecution. First 300 years. Mm. You know, Jesus himself was killed by the system. Mm. So <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So, yeah. That's true. That's so, persecuted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone who said, I want to be a Christian, mm. basically, you know, that's what Jesus was saying. Can you mm. drink from this cup? Mm. It's a, it was a bitter <laughs> cup, you know. Yeah. It meant life or death, yeah, yeah. or at least living on the edge yeah, yeah. Uh, for the first 300 years. So at that time, critical questions arise. And whenever you know, you're know you you're under persecution, and I think that's what's going on today. Mm. Uh, whenever you're under persecution, whenever you you know something will happen to you because of your faith, people begin to ask, okay, what is it that I really believe in? Mm. Uh -huh. uh, and you need to clarify. You need to clarify your what, 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 Yeah, your conviction. So if we believe in God, what, what does that mean? What does that mean? Mm. Um, you know, who is this God? How does he exist? You know, mm. all, all of that. So there's a lot of debate that's going on early on. And there are all kinds of teachings. Mm. Uh, many people call them heresies. And I think that's how we learn about them in the history books or church history books. I call them misconceptions or misunderstandings about the faith. So people don't exactly know, okay, so who is this Jesus? How does he relate mm. with God the Father? How, do, yeah, uh, yeah. You, you know, there's this thing called the Holy Spirit. Okay. Is he okay. a person? Is he not a person? Okay. You know, all of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so a number of things happen. First of all, um, you know, uh, the Alexandrian school produces theologians, people who engage in a systematic mm. study of, of, of the gospel. I see, of, I see. You know. So we have um, Origen, for example. Mm. Or, or Origen Ardamantius. He's, mm. he's, he's an, an Egyptian, mm. uh, but he's what we say the first systematic theologian. You know, before every... Before this is an African person. He's an African person. You're talking person. about now the church begin to ask themselves... What do we really believe in? Yeah. And they're going to build their theology. Yeah. And you're saying at, at the very inception of that, someone like Origen, who's an African, who's an African, who contributes towards systematic to, theology. Yes. In fact, he kind of like invents the thing. Hey. And, and yeah. Hey. I mean, he's, 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 he's the first person that we find who, you know, puts six different versions of scripture side by side, writes them mm. down, you know, side by side. So, this so one, what, this what one does this mean in light, this? Yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, in light of this? And what is it building? Through, I mean, you read some of his co commentaries. I've read, read some of his co commentaries. Man, they are detailed. Mm. Detailed. And he's writing all of that. You know, he's writing it in, in Greek. Um, he probably could speak Copt, uh, you know, at the time. So, so what are some of the things that they are... That those African theologians yeah. are building towards in terms of theology. So, so that's one of them. Yeah. Um, a little later comes Tertullian. Tertullian is a Tertullian, lawyer yeah. from Carthage, um, and another he, guy from Northern Africa. From Northern Africa, and he's a lawyer converts into Christianity, and you know he begins to write and to to begin to argue for for Christian faith, mm. and he sows the seeds or begins the seeds of uh, you know understanding about the Trinity. He doesn't complete that work. Mm. Yeah, so so he's be, he's before he's in the two hundreds, and then you know uh, someone else from Alexandria, you know, comes in and builds on that. Mm. Um, we have um, uh, we have Athanasius uh, mm -hmm. of Alexandria became late, later became a bishop of, of Alexandria, and at that time, uh, Athanasius comes at the time when there's like a big switch, uh, and that big switch is when uh, Constantine um, is is the emperor of you know the Roman yes, Empire at yes. the time. Um, at, at that time, and he takes over. And he takes over uh, around th uh, three, 306. In 313, mm. uh, he, he converts at some point in there. In 313 AD, uh, he issues what is called the Edict of Milan. Uh, and people misunderstand this, but the Edict of Milan just basically said all religions are equal. Even Christianity mm. is equal on par with every 
mm. uh, every other religion. Mm. Now later on that was changed and, and around 385 there and that, that was changed so that uh, a Christian became like superior over the others. Mm. But what happens in, in that edict is that now Christians are no longer officially persecuted. Mm. Now in, in the ah, peripheries they are okay. perse persecuted. Okay. Mm. So that paves the way for 12 years later um, in 325 for a big conference to be held to un un ask the question, who is Jesus? Is he God? Is he man? This is that, that, that thing that the church is still trying to figure out yeah. who are we, what yeah. do we, we, are, what, we what we really believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in 325, 325, there's this big conference, all people are brought in together, mm. and one of the biggest proponents for the Trinity, or one of the most articulate theologians uh, for, the, for the Trinity, is Athanasius, an African. And he's a part that's, of that that's, meeting. That's so surprising. Yeah, and out of that mm. comes uh, the, the creed of Nicaea, or the Nicene, the Nicene creed. creed. And we say that creed up mm. to today. Mm. In fact, if, you know, mm. even Protestants, mm. uh, a number of Protestants will say, will, will, say the Nicene, mm. uh, will say the Nicene creed. So that's another contribution that mm. we have there. Now, before that, let's, let's uh, sort of rewind a little yeah. bit. Before that, um, one, of, one of Athanasius' mentors, uh, is, is someone known as Saint Anthony the Great. Mm. Saint Anthony the Great was a hermit. He was a he was a uh, like a monk. Mm. He lived like in the desert, yeah. in the caves, mm. and what and and um, you know a very astute theologian and uh, was able to really just articulate his faith. Uh, and and you know um, Saint Anthony and uh, and Pacomius or Saint Pacomius um, together. Say Saint Anthony started what we call like hermitic. Hamitic uh, uh, monasticism or, or like being a monk, eh? mm. but, but a hermit. Uh, Pacomius um, sort of began to craft uh, organizations of, of people living together celibate lives, mm. uh, what we now call monasteries. Mm. And so kind of like created that, you know, kind of life. And, and that kind of life is what evolved into monastic life that completely transformed Europe mm. in every way. Mm. Education, medicine, mm. you know, agriculture, urban life, mm. um, you know, keeping of municipal records, mm. all those things mm. uh, are... Uh, and Impacted the, Western thinking, Western yeah, yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, those things brought together would now create the universities that mm. then created... Uh, um, the, the necessary conditions for, for industrial, mm. uh, the, the industrial revolution, mm. uh, whose flip, you know, the, the flip result yeah. was now this thing we call co colonialism. Mm. Uh, but, uh, you know, Africans were contributing, you, mm. know, uh, you know, to those kinds uh, of things. That's fascinating for me, again, uh, and I, I hope I'm, I'm interpreting this too many times, mm. but my perception is always this thing was packaged, Yeah, <laughs> you know, it was put in a box, it was yeah. packaged nicely, a nice bow, and it was brought to us, and you're like, yeah. Africans, here you go. Mm. But what you're saying is from the very get-go. And if you've watched other, the other, you know, parts of this conversation, what you said is that mm. at Pentecost, Africans were present. Mm -hmm. Early missionary work, Africans were present. Mm -hmm. Right now, you've spoken about a couple of critical things. You talked about things like, you know, our systematic theology. Yeah. Some of that thinking was proposed and yeah. put forward by Africans. You're mm. talking about, you know, things like the Trinity, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, that African people were there at the table, the ones who were advancing uh, conversation. The that setting of Easter, the dates yes, for yes, Easter. Yes, 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 yes. Same thing. Same thing. Right in you there. You talked about monastic life and how that has impacted Western Europe. Yeah. And you know, for me, and I, I guess even as we close this series, is to ask, how come this story is not told? How, 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 come, how come all I hear is, Mm. African has been handed down this thing, we've been given this thing, now we are spitting it out because you're here to mm. meow, it mm. doesn't belong to us. Mm. Where is this, why aren't we hearing this narrative? Uh, I think, I think ev everyone tells a story from their own perspective mm. and for a long time we haven't told our, st our story. Mm. Uh, from my own perspective. I mean, for me, I've, you know, I've read those things. Now, here's the thing. For me, when I went, uh, when I was reading this story growing up and so mm. on, uh, I didn't know, you yeah. know, I, I didn't know. And, and it's all there, but it's, 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 it's it, but it's hidden in plain, plain sight. <laughs> I like that. But then I think when I began putting two and two together, yeah. 
and to learn that you know people like Anthony were from the continent mm. to learn that you know the the Ethiopian Orthodox Church you know has been there for for before centuries Europe. And, yeah, be, you know before Europe that's amazing uh, to to uh, to understand Athanasius role uh, you know in uh, in um, in f formulating what we believe uh, all of a sudden my eye, it's like the film mm. the skills fell off mm. my f fell off my eyes uh, and also understanding for me to understand and I think this is really really critical for us to understand that Jesus um, Jesus enters into human life into human society into mm. our hearts into our minds into our skins really mm. uh, he enters into into our ways of thinking he enters into uh, into all of that and he transforms it mm. uh, and and any understanding of Jesus that does not you know help us uh, to see that you know that's that's john chapter 1 verse 1 to 12. Mm. um it, it's mm. really really you know it's 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 christ entering and embedding himself and you know really energizing us from within i think that's what we need to understand and whenever that argument comes up is to begin to say look that's not how it is mm. um christianity was not handed to, to, to anyone was not forced in fact a, everywhere where christianity is forced down it doesn't, it doesn't work. work it doesn't work mm. but when people begin to understand him for himself it begins to incarnate it incarnate begins to, to enter connect with our yeah. lifestyle yeah. and that's what he says in colossians once he enters in he gives life i love it yeah he he gives life in in, in philippians 2 he says you know god god sort of left that whole you know majesty and everything and came in and entered into our life humbled himself and and now energizes us um, you know, in terms of our lives. And I think Africa is going to be energized. The day we, <laughs> we, mm. we get to understand mm. that this is not someone else's faith. In fact, we shouldn't even try to articulate it in, a, in someone else's word. Mm. We need to sing it in our own language. We need to speak it in our mm. own language. In our own we, expression. In our own expression. Um, and, and articulate it in our own way, uh, in, our, in our own forms. And that's really going to free us. Mm. Yeah. I love it. Mm. Hey, guys, thank you so much. This has been such a good... We've been looking forward to this. Yeah. I feel like we can continue... <laughs> And go on, but uh, always on conversations yeah. on church and culture, talking about is Christianity African? I listened to, um, not I read a quote by Professor Mbiti, mm -hmm. who I think has written a lot about this topic. Yeah, and yeah. he says, uh, I'm going to butcher the quote, but he says something about, you know, Christianity almost being an African religion. It's, its history dates so far back in Africa that it can be considered an African religion mm -hmm. on its own. Yeah. Fascinating. Thank you so much for catching us on Always On. If you haven't covered the parts, part one, two, three, and this one, part four, are available. God bless you guys. Mm -hmm.